tempo, then there's sequencing, right? They kind of go together. So yeah. sequencing of your arm position to your body turn. Okay, what else is there? Tra do you know what transition is? Yeah. Okay, so what, show me what transition is. Like from the backswing to downswing? Yeah, so transition from backswing to downswing. Okay, so when you're doing that, look how narrow. Go and do it again. So if you try to set that, that's why you hit it right, right there. Has anyone ever, have you ever worked on it with that? So, yeah, so what I would try to do is get more width and a flatter wrist. So, so two things at the top, the width and then the transition from back to having a smooth and appropriate transition. Some are faster than others, but the same. And then solid contact. So I forgot what I even listed. Solid, so sorry. Solid contact. Tempo. Transition. And so sequence and transition go into tempo. Yeah. But you gotta break them down separately and work on them separately. So sequencing would be speed sit. Um, transition would be the game trainer I said. I just went back to hitting 20 shots a day because it's such a simple, simple concept in swing thought. But it makes it cures. It's I can show you pictures of like students. Like they may impact it like this. They may have something here. Like it fixes everything and uh, not everything, but the main core. The main core aspects of a golf swing. Which if you look at it, like Sean Stephanie and then you look at Rory McIlroy and Jim Furyk, they all have certain things in common. They all look different, but their impact, their tempo consistency. Uh, transitions consistent. So those are things you should work on every day that are also going to build your uh, speed and distance, but you're also going to control your club base if you know what actually controls your club base. So, yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, do you notice he hadn't even mentioned your strength yet? Yeah. He's yeah. just talking about all swings. Well, how do you think these guys, like, there's no way Rory McElroy or Ricky Tyler could beat me in an arm wrestling competition or in a wrestling competition? Justin just Thomas, Thomas, really? Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> they're like Ricky's hitting a like, three thirds. Who? I thought Rory. Rory's got bulked up, but he's not bulked up. He's tiger. He got tighter shirts yeah. from 2000 to 2006 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like. Yeah. You know, I hit balls next to him twice, and his arms are about as big as your arms. No. Really? He's not more than serious? 150 pounds. Yeah. Oh. No. His lower body, all their lower bodies are bigger than I thought. Yeah. But they're, like Dustin Johnson, the first time I'd seen him since college, like face to face, like, yeah. and he, like, he was a little, he was never chunkier, he was always an athlete, stout, but yeah. he was a machine when I saw him at the PGA. He was just like, like, perfectly, like, skinny, yeah. like, but yeah. chiseled. His forearms are still like Popeyes, they've always been that way. Yeah. But then his lower body, he's just, they made him into a machine. What about first time? Brooks kept it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's different. No, yeah. Brooks, I got a man crush on him. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize he was the only one that impressed me physically. Like, yeah. he's built like a strong safety. Like, all this talk about Rory and these, like, no. So like, Rory has about biceps like this. And that's what I learned through the gate trainer is the sequencing and, like, what the downswing, like, why bulking up in your biceps and chest and all that isn't good. Because, if you're, everybody wants to yank and control it, and the stronger you are, the more your instincts are gonna want to, to do that. that. But you look at Ricky, Rory, like even Dustin Johnson, he, he just built like an athlete, but his biceps, his forearms are probably bigger than his biceps. Yeah. Uh, oh. Kepka is probably the only one that isn't, but his swing, he has a little, he should probably vomit by those guys, but he, ha I don't know, I'm not saying I haven't done the research on his biceps are pulling more than, yeah. but uh, like when I go to my dad who could bench press, twice as much as me, but he hits it 80 yards behind me. It's because when I got him the game trainer, he's like, <laughs> like, you know, and like, I picked up 20 yards when I got my wrist flat one and understood open face versus close, close face. And then added another 10 yards when I got the game trainer and added the sequencing and the transition. And my accuracy just like came, I not only hit it further, but I could control the club face because I never understood what a square club face was, into or how it worked. Yeah. So, like, everyone talks about wanting to be rotational, right? And they're all doing it, whatever. They're just spinning out of control. But if you, like, stick this in above your belly button, then you're not your sternum, but in between. 
and you put it there so it's pointed at the target, right? So I'll kind of get, if I'm hitting it this way down the black line, great black map. So if I turn everything back, so that's where my spine, right? So then if I take it to the top and have a flat wrist, it looks slightly shut. And you know more golf than most of us do, so you probably know this. And then if you just do nothing with your arm, you just rotate, then it's pointed down the target line, right? So Dustin has to be like this because he's so athletic and he can turn so hard into the ball. If he turns like I do, then it's you know going there. Yeah. So what I don't know. I think it was a, co a combo of people saying swing smooth. Like we didn't know what swing smooth was. Like swinging smooth is like you know to right. here, yeah. but there from here it should be not with your arms or upper body, but you're firing the hips and then to make it. This is literally what I think about. I just got to find that position at the top that I can turn as hard as I can and it matches up. Yeah. But like so for if you're an old guy that can't turn, maybe your position is good. But if you can turn like Dustin, where's that face going that way? Yeah. And then you're losing distance because you're adding loft, you're glancing blow. Yeah. But if you can get it, you know, square, most of us, I, if we just try to get square and then rotate, it's probably going to be pointing down the target line. But that's the only way you're going to have consistent path and face is if you can have that transition so disciplined and take the upper body out of it and turn properly. Yeah. And that's literally, if you can set up correctly, set it correctly, and learn that, how to turn without yanking with your arm, you're going to have such good club face control and such good, but it's when I added, you know, because I always wanted to push, I didn't turn correctly. So then I was sliding out and then stalling, right? So this past year I was like, hey, I got to, but I just didn't do enough rep. So that's where I was telling you like indoor stuff, like treat it like, if I was a serious golfer, like still had a dream. I don't really have any dreams anymore. <laughs> <I'm just done. laughs> it's over, JJ. Yeah, it's yeah, over. 34. Yeah, yeah, it's over. But, like, and that's what was so frustrating. Why I get so mad? Like, why didn't I do this more? Like, yeah, yeah. now I'm out here under the gun, and I'm like, yeah. damn it, I can't turn right. And, yeah. Like, I want to just turn hard, but I can't. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to ingrain movement patterns, and then when you're hitting balls, like, I have a saber stick where is it right there so this this has the beads in it so you just have the same transition every time and you have feedback because people go ahead yeah no no you're you're all over it so Reagan, if you're struggling with your set what 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 are you struggling with do you think what, you, what when you're setting your club um, so like what do you think your if when you your tendency when you struggle like it's really narrow like it's like that but if you have a it, it's like, I've always said, God, we got to short it, we got to short it, we got to short it. But the reality is, no, we got to widen it. I mean, the reality is. Well, widen it. So the, actually, Bruce, they, they both work, don't they? Those well, both finally, work. and this is where it takes, because so many people, Bruce had even tried to tell me a million times how to shorten it. But it wasn't until one day we had a wall right there, and I was like swinging in that way. And he was like, oh, you know what some, I forget who told him one time, was what if you took your right hand and just press against the wall? And so I was like this, you know, then I take my right, am I gonna press against the wall like that or am I gonna go like perfect, this? Perfect. Now look at my wrist, look at my width, look at my leg, perfect. it's all right there. And that clicked with me, I don't, but do we can but, try that? But that's perfect, but see, that's what I'm talking about because I always say, no, oh, we need to have a, a shorter, I, I believe a shorter set is typically more a repeatable set. Well, but it's not, it's wider. It's, I, I, it's, I think it's wider, but the, the length of your swing should be, it's, you should judge it based on your shoulder turn. So if you look at Dustin and Ricky and Rory, they look like they're parallel to pass parallel, but they can turn like 130 degrees. Yeah. But if they're at 90 degrees like John Rahm, everyone's like, oh, he's so short. He's fully turned and rotated. He's just so connected and how far does he hit it, right? He, exactly. If he could turn like Dustin and then get there and stay connected and wide, then he could probably blow past right. Dustin. Yeah. But it's we everyone judges it by the length uh, their club when it's just your body yeah. rotation. Yeah. That's where the top coaches that I've been around and still follow, or I didn't know, but I found other coaches to follow. Like most of their stuff is being done in a gym or indoors. And when you're on the range and putting a feel to it, your shot shaping, pre shot routine, distance control, distance control is another thing everybody overlooks. It's like that when you're on a track man, pay attention to your carry distance and get that dialed in. Because, yeah. uh, and why it's, you know, this system right here. 
like you can plug in how find your ball mark every approach shot and how far to carry, you know, on your own course, you can get it dialed in. So 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 what JJ just said about shoulder turn. What was your tendency and, and where is it now? 